maybe on social media we're always we're making people demotivated because we're like, well, this is how it needs to be done. So if your mind is not in the right place, all the other goals, all the other body goals, right, you'll fail. You also deserve to feel happy in your body. So if you're fit, if you know, if you achieve your dream body, like you're gonna be really happy and full of energy. Like if you're now 40 years old and you don't work out for the next 20 years and you do a little bit of cardio and a little bit of weight training, like you're gonna be so much older than your neighbor who did a workout, you know, three, four times a week. From a young age, Manuel developed an obsession with fitness, seeing it as a tool to take control over his life. His journey took him from being an officer in the prestigious mountain infantry to obtaining a master degree in sports science. His methods focus on being time efficient, low risk, yet deliver remarkable results. I don't know why I was so disciplined and I couldn't sort of do much with my life. I was very hungry. That triggered a lot of, I think, determination or thrive to like, you know, once I get the chance, I'm doing it. And uh, I want to ask you about the ice bath. How is it? Uh, yeah, and so you start to love it. And it becomes so, it makes you so alive. So it is a really meditative experience, actually. The Avenue of the Strongest is a podcast dedicated to exploring the lives and experiences of the most inspiring individuals from around the world. Each episode features interviews with fascinating guests who share their insights and wisdom on a variety of topics, including education, impact, motivation, health, and learning. Here are your hosts, Aniette Chowdhury and Vlad Suleiman. This podcast is sponsored by Argo Prep, an award-winning educational publisher serving over a million students nationwide. If you're a kindergarten to eighth grade teacher or principal, be sure to check out our supplementary workbooks to get your students ready for standardized state testing. We cover all subjects from kindergarten to eighth grade. Use the coupon code AVENUE for a 25% discount off of all purchase orders. Visit us today at argoprep.com slash store. So Manuel, welcome to the show. Let's do this. Thank you very much for having me. I'm excited to be here. You know, before before I um, started to speak with you, I went to your Instagram and I saw a post, your recent post about the ice bath and really liked what you wrote yeah. there. Uh, you wrote that something is better than nothing. You know, I really want to <laughs> yes. focus on this uh, on the statement because it really can be applied to anything, whether it's taking a 10 minute walk instead of hour long workout or writing a paragraph of novel rather than a whole chapter, you know, or practicing mindfulness for just five yeah, minutes exactly. during a day. So, um, yeah, really, I would, um... yeah, I would like to ask you how you see this. And uh, I want to ask you about the ice bath. How is it? So, so first about the ice bath, I, I love it. And I started that quite a few years ago. Didn't actually knew much about ice bath. It was more, I was on holiday in Australia. I was still living in Munich. And uh, so I was on holiday from December to January, came back. And we always had a morning swim, me and my business partner there. And then we, you know, we recorded for Instagram. And I'm like, I'm gonna keep doing this. So I just jumped into the Isar River in Munich, but it was snowy and cold and then it just became and then you know you do it a few times so i always went for a run for like 15 minutes so you get the adrenaline pumping mm -hmm. and then jumped into the like ice cold river like at a you know so where the river doesn't flow very fast so we're right. safe but uh uh yeah and so you start to love it and it becomes so it makes you so alive so it is a really meditative experience actually. So now when I do ice baths or like, you know, you jump in a mountain lake or you sit in those, you know, those ice tubs and you breathe, you calm down your, you calm down your heart rate, um, sort of fight the, you know, that fight and problems. And it's so, it is like the most meditative experience I have. Like similar, like when I go free diving, right. right and just immersed in water and it's just like all the other thoughts, just like, they go away, right? Like you do not get distracted at all. And it's effortlessly. Um, yeah, but uh, the other question where I wrote, like something is better than nothing. 
um, like I struggle, you know, I'm not perfect myself. Right. And right. I find people think, you know, oh, I'm doing a three month transformation, transformation. And then I got it, you know, then I'm like, then I'm fit and I'm there. And I'm like, obviously, no, you need to, you know, stay persistent, like keep working out. But it's also life happens, right? And you have more stressful times, like maybe some stress in family with friends, some health issues and, you know, with relatives or whatever. So it's just like life gets in the way always. That you have good times where it flows, you have bad times where it doesn't. And so for me personally, I was like, at the moment with uni and exams, I'm like, well, I don't have time for, um, you know, for a lot of sauna and ice bath stuff and things. Because usually you want to, separate the ice baths from your weight workouts <clears throat> but then i don't want to go twice to the gym because i don't have the time for that mm -hmm. so you know it's like well i'm just gonna do it in once a week and it's better than nothing right and you have the health benefits from it so and obviously that i mean that accounts to all the other things too if i have a five minute meditation and adjust just call my breath set the timer on the on the iphone it changes everything Like, no, of course, it's better to meditate 15 minutes and to meditate regularly so they actually have the impact on your brain waves after doing it for a month. You know, and I find in maybe on social media, we're always uh, coming, you know, like we're making people, we are demotivated because it's like, well, this is how it needs to be done. And then like, oh, well, great. I don't have time for that. Right. So I just rather than just give up. Um, but then it's like, it's all the little things you keep doing that also keep your your spirit alive to like be healthy and you know keep trying again tomorrow mm -hmm. um yeah you know what is what, what is funny is that i knew as ice bath for a long time and usually you know when we went to sauna it was just like for a second you go to to the sauna and then you just jump to this hot uh, to this cold water and go out jump and go out you know you're yeah. not really sitting yeah. there this is was yeah whole, exactly. whole experience of all my life you know and now i just came to arizona from new york and i started to go to a gym and they and i saw people just sitting there just sitting five minutes ten minutes mm -hmm. somebody's even half an hour and i'm like wow let me let let me try you know and i jumped first time maybe months ago i couldn't mm -hmm. even see there 30 seconds everything was just breaking all my all my bones and everything you know and i said that yeah this, yeah this is a challenge for me i have to be there minimum like five minutes in one month so fast forward now i'm sitting like 12 minutes very good and wow. as you and That's as good. you said this is really like a meditation especially if you do it after the sauna you you just sit and yeah you, and, and you close your eyes and you breathe in breathe out it really you know comes comes down But my question is, yeah. why why are you not mixing it with the gym? Is there any? Uh... Oh, um, you'd have to. Um, we can like maybe link a recent post, recent podcast episode from Huberman. Um, but it's just there's some studies out there that show. So it's, I mean, we knew that, but it's basically if you're an, uh, an athlete who let's say run an ultra marathon yesterday and you want to recover as fast as possible or your soccer player for instance they don't really want to build muscles right but they want to basically train and do a lot of tactical training and sprints and coordination stuff so they want to train tomorrow again and they want a body body to recover as quickly as possible so when they do an ice bath after a training session all those micro tears in the muscle you know it helps them to close them and basically you you know you basically you'll cover faster So tomorrow you can do another soccer training session or like another run. But if you do weight training and you actually want to increase muscle size, right? You want to put muscles on, then you want those micro tears in the muscle, right? Mm -hmm. And they're getting repaired. And, um, and obviously, you know, like they're just super, super micro. So, um, but then you do an ice bath after, after a, a weight training session where you try to build muscles and it sends those, it basically just like limits um your body basically the impact you send to your cells right with like those micro tears and the, the, the mechanical tension you put on them that made them to to suffer right yeah. so you lower that impact mm -hmm. so basically your body is doesn't has to adapt that much mm -hmm. um but then on the other hand i'm like is if you end up not going 
doing an ice bath at all. You know, I'm like, well, no, then maybe have your five gym sessions. And if you don't have time to extra do an ice bath sometimes else during the day, you know, just do it after your workout once a week, you know, because then you still have the meditative effect you have the, for your, for your mind, for your mental health. Um, and still, you know, like the, the, the health effects for anti-aging and, and all of these things. But yes, for this particular workout, you know, it's going to be a little bit less optimal. Mm. And, um, and I think it's important for people who, who are overwhelmed, you know, by all the uh, information out there and had and listen to podcasts and like oh this is how it needs to be done and this right. is you know and like no like it's not black and white it's when we say about it's like less beneficial or in a study it's like yes that might be you know by one or five percent or something so you know it's it, it it's not like oh you didn't basically didn't work out it's just like it's a it's not perfect and that's what would advise you to not do the ice bath after your weight workout session, but you, you know, very likely can do an ice bath after each workout session and you'll still add muscles, mm. but like, so, why do it? If we know, you know, it's not the smartest right. thing to do. So if I want to build muscle, I will not go after the, after the training because right now, right now what I'm doing is I'm, I'm, I'm going to, um, I mean, it's not a gym. It's uh, like high intense training. It's called warrior sculpt. It includes the mm-hmm. uh, yoga. It mm-hmm. also some little bit of weightlifting. So, oh, cool. uh, so yeah. I'm going the, every day, and after every training, I go to actually to take sauna and then ice ice, ice bath. So basically, if I want to build my muscle, I shouldn't do it. Yeah. So yeah, exactly. So basically, you can do sauna. There's nothing. There's no negative effect correlated with weight training and sauna. After it's actually you know helps your recovery. But, uh, yeah, but definitely maybe, I don't know if you can timely separate it, it'd be a lot better. It doesn't really, I don't think it's makes sense to do it before you work out, well, you know, yeah, like the ice bath, not, yeah. because usually when we immerse ourselves in water, we have the same effect, right? When you swim or when you dive that most of your blood retreats from your, from your legs and your, uh, your arms into your core. Right, so then you try to train, and it's basically the blood isn't where it's supposed to be, so it just sucks a lot more. Um, mm. And yeah, so no, yeah, if I were you, I would definitely not do it every day. Got it, got it. After okay. training, th- th- thanks for the advice. There's something new. I'll not do it. <laughs> Hey there, before we dive back into the episode, I wanted to stop for just a brief moment and express our heartfelt gratitude. Knowing that you've chosen to spend your time with us to listen and engage with our content truly warms our hearts. Every story we share, every topic we discuss is made much more meaningful if you are here with us on this journey. If you found value in what you've heard so far and you're excited as we are about the episodes to come, we'd be so honored if you'd hit that subscribe button. It not only ensures you stay informed of all of our new content, but it also supports us in continuing to create and share. From all of us here, a sincere thank you. Now, without further ado, let's get back to the episode. So let's yeah. talk about um, the moment you first became interested in fitness yeah i what? i thought about it and um yeah i'm oh, just sorry Finish yeah go question. on go on um i was quite i think i was a very inspired by um by movies when i was young right and um so like fast and furious 2 is massive triceps of yeah. um i think it paul walker's friend um yeah like and i was like oh my god and then i watched vin diesel and um, you know so like oh i want to look like this so i always wanted i think because i'm quite physical and wasn't the, the best especially i was really bad at school when i was young so i always thought oh well i you know i just want to focus on my physical attributes and um but then of course you know you're back then there was so much less information out there like Right. Yeah, you had those movies, but there was no YouTube, there was nothing, right? So no social media. So I, like until like in the eighth or ninth class, then, you know, I got a little bit into training and we had some dumbbells here. I bought some dumbbells, you know, trained at home, but I obviously had no idea what to do. So, and then, you know, my friends at school, like, oh yeah, try butterfly, you know, with the machine. 
um, it was like in a basement in school, there was a butterfly machine and, um, <laughs> quite funny, but uh, you know, we did that. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and, but I got really, I think because I lived in a village and I was very, didn't have many friends. So I was, I was very, and I couldn't sort of do much with my life. I was very hungry. And so that, that triggered a lot of, I think, determination or thrive to like, you know, once I get the chance, I'm doing it. So then once I finished middle school, went to high school in, in a, in a bigger city in Germany, then, then I was like, you know, okay, first day, there's a gym below my school. I'm signing up. And I was the only guy like, you know, from my, from my class that we actually then went to the gym every day after school, but it's perfect because I already had to drive off the train for an hour to the city, you know, and then just did the gym after school. And I was like, okay, I want to do fighting. Um, like I always, I was, um, you know, I was amazed about martial arts and obviously quite insecure as a teenager. So I'm like, oh, I want to be able to fight. So then I started Taekwondo also in Ta also in the city because now, you know, I was there, but I still live with my home and my parents. So usually my day started at like 5.30, driving an hour with the train to school, do school, then go to the gym for an hour and a half or so. Then I just had to kill time in town and then had my Taekwondo lessons at 6 p.m. at night and then came back home at like 8 or 9. And, um, and then I just repeated the same thing again. <laughs> and um, yeah, and so, you know, that's how I, that's how I really got into, into working out. And I don't know why I was so disciplined, you know, like suddenly right. when I had the chance, so I was really thinking about that. And it, it must have been because there was so much time where I wanted and I couldn't. What, what about the being an officer in the mountain infantry? Maybe it shaped your perspective on physical fitness. Maybe this is where yeah, for sure, you are, for sure. this, this so, is how it impacted your, you know, determination. Well, I mean, I was already very determined then in, in high school. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, and obviously I also meditated in Taekwondo and stuff. So, so I got really, I think mind strong and. And then when I joined the military and in the mountain infantry, you realize like, oh, you know, the big dude with muscles, like we have like small guys carrying 30 kilogram backpack and run up the mountain, you know, and they're extremely fit. And I was just like, how is this possible? Um, I said, insane. So you actually know what real fitness is, right? And, and, and not just to also, you know, what usually the military does in basic training is putting pressure on people, physical pressure, right? And hunger and, and sleep deprived, a little bit sleep deprived to just see what you're made of. And you can really see people turning really ugly, right? Because mm -hmm. once you're exhausted, you can't control your emotion. 100%. So, you know, I always, I always joked and I was like, if I want to date someone, I make them physically exhausted right. to the point where they're just themselves. Because they can't, con you can't control your what's inside. <laughs> it just comes out. <laughs> so if you're really, you know, narcissistic or, or, or mean, you know, or just look after yourself. Like you don't help your group members, yeah. you know, you don't help someone else to carry their backpack because they're already way more exhausted than you. You just look after yourself. So it's really interesting. Um, but, but so yeah, military really, um, sort of what actually, what's actually real fitness. Right. Like, can I use, let's say you do, you go in the gym, you don't run much, right? And you just do like bench press in the machine and rows in the machine. And I'm like, yeah, you can't really transfer that too much into real life. Right. But if you do a lot of free weights, for instance, like all your 240 something muscles need to work in your body, right? They all need to stabilize. So if I use a free weight and I do like a one arm shoulder press, like my core needs to, to, you know, that's like an unequal uh, distribution of weight. So it needs to work too, right? So your hip needs to work, your lower back works, your balance needs to work, so your brain actually works more because it's a more complex movement. And then when you're out there and with your normal life or you're in the military on a mission or whatever, like your body is actually then fitter and more capable than the other person's body, right? Because you don't just have muscles, but you also have functional muscles and you train your muscle chain your balance your cognitive skills um yeah so i think it, it definitely impacted it greatly yeah mm -hmm. uh in your 
in, in your videos a lot, you're speaking about the holistic approach. So could you please explain what does it mean? Because fitness and holistic, it's, uh, I mean, it's something, something new and it, it's not that something you will hear all the time because. Yeah. Yeah. I think oh, obviously I live in Barham Bay at the moment. I'm not sure if you know it, but it's yeah. very, it's very, um, a lot of hippies, a lot of creatives. So we live in a little bubble there, right? So mm -hmm. yoga is like the most normal thing in the world. And, but it's also very nice. Um, I think because to you, I don't think like everyone, anyone was unfriendly to me in like the last year or so, you know, it's like everyone is just yeah. relaxed and happy and chill. So it's really yeah. beautiful. Like if your environment is like this, like, and you can still be disciplined and work hard, but your environment is just calm, friendly and nice. Um, but so it makes like, obviously there's more to life than fitness, right? And we know how important fitness is, but then in the end, so when we talked about determination, so a holistic fitness, a holistic approach basically means our mind and our body is one, right? And we should have never separated it and be like, well, if I'm, you know, going to not to shrink, but uh, to, uh, you know, getting mental support and talk with someone like we just focus on emotional things. I'm like, no, your body and your mind is connected. So, you know, we know. So like when, when we talk about sleep or when we talk about depression, for, for instance, for men, like you start working out, like it really helps your depression, right? Like, so, so we, we shouldn't have never really separated, you know, everything that we basically how we treat your brain and separate it from the body. Yeah. And, um, and so same, like if you can't, if you don't have the discipline, like you're not going to work out. If you don't, if you can't commit for long term, you're not going to keep working out. Right. So it's all for nothing. Um, so if your mind is not in the right place, like all the other goals, all the other body goals, right. You'll fail. So, so now we know, right? We do meditation, we do visualization and things like that really helps us to get more stuff done, to get more discipline, to get more grounded, calm. So I find, and, um, and then on the other hand, you know, I have people in the gym looking all forceful and like, and just, they're wanting it, they're hungry, but then I'm looking at their face and then they're like, they're all tight. You know, they're all like, they're so, they're not torturing themselves, maybe to a degree, you know, I'm like, oh, like, yeah, that's one approach, but I also find like, you should love it. You should like it. You, and like, there's so much more about you. Right. And like, if you like happiness doesn't come from your bicep size or anything. Right. So it's like, no, we know we, 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 you know, you get endorphins when you go for a run, you will be happier. You also deserve to feel happy in your body. So if you're fit, if you know, if you achieve your dream body, like you're going to be really happy and full of energy, but like, there's so much more to you. So I find the holistic and then, you know, it's about diet, right? It's about, um, like for instance, now we, then we do yoga. So, you know, so I did my yoga teacher training and I'm like, oh, is this is a great form besides getting very mobile and flexible. It's a great form of meditation because I can't sit still. Well, really problems with that. So if you move and you do vinyasa yoga and you just, just follow the instructor, um, like you meditate without even knowing that you meditate. And after an hour yoga session, you're like, Whoa, I'm so calm and relaxed. I love, um, I love, I love your approach with, uh, that you are not just heavy lift. You have yoga, you have meditating, you are doing the ice bath. I mean, everything in combination really makes the huge progress. And it will not make you burn out. This is the, this is the key, I think. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It's not fitness. is not just another thing like to all the high achievers out there, right? Like you already live in New York. You've got a good career going. Fitness is not another thing that you just pursue with, you know, like it's just yeah. on your bucket, on your, on your to-do list. And I'm like, and I'm going after this and I got it done and I keep going. I'm like, <laughs> And I think we live in such a high stress environment nowadays, right? It's, it's, if you compare it to, to 500 years ago or a thousand, it's, it's insane. And, and we obviously know that our brain or our body is not, can't adjust that much in like in a, in a hundred years time or even 50 years. So it's like what your nervous system, all the, uh, well, all like the flashes of noise right on your nervous system, right. like every day, 
it's it's insane like so you need to to have a break do a little bit of yoga you know from so for me um i can never stop my brain but then i've found ways on you know that really work well without even trying so if i go free diving in the ocean or just for a snorkel session you know i know i see rays and a little bit of marine life the environment's beautiful and you know and like you just the noise stops fully and i just there for like 20 minutes go back up and i'm like oh i was in a different world right now and i didn't even have to try didn't even have to try um the same with the vinyasa yoga right i go to a yoga studio i do a session and i'm like oh this is beautiful so so i think i think um well when it comes to all those things obviously you need to find smart ways on how to add them to your lifestyle right yeah this is actually the uh, very nice transition to my next question. And I want to speak about um, the common mistakes people make when trying to transform their bodies. So one of the common mistakes I think is uh, that every single one of us did it is uh, setting unrealistic goals and, and expecting immediate results. I see it every day when I go to, to gym or doing yoga, you know, I, I speak with people and they complaining to me. Yeah. I, I, I came to this class. I was expecting to wait, to wait, uh, to lose weight, and I'm not doing it. This and that, you know. And they're just going to this class just for one week. <laughs> and mm, yeah. I think the thing is that everyone understands, and I hope. I mean, I hope they should understand that body transformation is a process that requires time, patience, and consistency. So, uh, what you think about it? What, what people should. What should be, what should be the expectation they should put, and uh, what are other common mistakes you see when you work with people? Yeah, I think. I mean, not so much about expectations, but it's if it sucks and you don't like it and you just start it, well, keep doing it for at least one to two months, because then your brain adjusts, right? That we know now. So basically, that initial initial oh like i just i really don't want to go to the gym like yeah. it's gonna happen you, sh in the you first should you should weeks, embrace your suck less. embrace exactly the suck. and the suck is gonna be exactly and the suck is gonna go down so obviously then you have like you know faces in life but it's very high in the beginning and like you keep sticking through that one or one or two months of training then it becomes easier and it becomes a habit it requires less determination um and yeah i have similar like when i train a client and he's like well i want to look like you know he's a little bit overweight and we're working on weight loss i'm like i want to look put on muscle like this guy and I'm like you have no idea like this you know for, for either either genetically blessed or right. you're pressing i don't know 100 kilogram bench press you go five times like this guy like if you actually know how hard he worked he is a little bit chubby still but like he has proper muscles, you know, if he's not genetically just like built like that because he's Irish or Norway, Norwegian or <laughs> whatever, like, you know, you have to train like crazy, like, yeah, you know, like really hard. So I think for some people, um, like the, we, we see results of people and obviously you never know who took testosterone or not, but, um, and so I find in social media, it's very much like, oh, basically everyone with muscles, you know, cheated. And I'm like, no, but you know, like when you're in the industry, like you can tell, you can tell all the successful people who took testosterone apart because you just can't look like this. But then there's also a lot of guys who take, um, who take testosterone, who don't look that successful. So you really can't tell, tell them apart because they actually do it, but they didn't manage it. You know, they actually, they're not like the upper 10%. Um, but it also, also that also sets unrealistic goals, right? Because they're right. like, well, I want to look like this guy. And I'm like, no, you won't. Like, you know, if you don't want to take testosterone risk your health, like, so I think it's a process and you need to fall in love with it. And it's all, I think you need to, it's what I always like when I speak about empowerment of people is, or empowerment in general is you have more information, right? Information is power. So if you look at the other side and you see what happens when I don't work out, how much faster do I age, right? Like how much, 
less energy I have every day, you know, like less endorphins, I feel less happy. But like my cells are aging faster, my bone density decreases faster, my grip strength. So like I age and like if you're now 40 years old and you don't work out for the next 20 years and you do a little bit of cardio and a little bit of weight training, like you're going to be so much older, not, not on your, you know, not on paper, but in biological terms, than your neighbor who did a workout, you know, three, four times a week. Right. And it makes a massive difference in like, the diff so it's like, okay, so on the other hand, like, you know, this is what you sign up for. If you don't work out or if you don't, and you don't need to work out in the gym, like it's like, it should be part of your workout routine, but, um, but you can, you know, like you're playing golf, you are going for a run in the morning, you're doing a swim, you know, these are already a lot of things, but then having yeah. some mechanical tension, some weights on your body, that's really helped. That's really sort of the other spectrum of, of staying healthy and young. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so, so basically knowing for a guy who has problems or just starts a journey, um, like knowing what you avoid, right, which I think can serve as a motivational factor. And, and yeah, not setting, I think putting the work in, and I think it, yeah, it's quite overwhelming. Um, but just basically by just prioritizing the most, you know, the five, the five pillars where it's like, well, get the workout done, right? Of course, you can always improve your workouts and work out harder and smarter. And, but, um, you know, no alcohol, no drugs, or like very little, right? Um, and then focus on your diet, right? Your sleep, like it, uh, your diet, so important, you know, stay away from processed food. And if you don't give your body new nutrients, how do you expect it to grow its muscle? Um, and then your sleep, right? Like you build your muscles in your sleep. So it's, if you don't, if your sleep is shit, like your testosterone levels are gonna be down, like your recovery is bad, like don't expect great results. Um, and I would say the, the fifth one is stress management. So now we know all, you know, how toxic, like chronic stress is and how it actually impacts our body, body's ability to, to recover, to um, uh, even your gut, right? Like how, how yeah. much it impacts your gut. And if your gut doesn't work properly, like, well, this is your center, like where, it, you know, it breaks down proteins. It, so, yeah. So you want to like, just focus, you know, like, take all the noise of the fitness industry of like away we like focus on these five things persistently and you're not going to look like the person you want to look like that is maybe a role model but you're going to look like the best version of yourself exactly. right because we have different genetics like you're not going to look like me ever i'm not going to look like you ever and my my friend in germany is like 190 tall you know, and I'm like, well, I'm not gonna, you know, he's, we always train together in uni, at uni, and like, he, we train the same way, but he is entirely different body shape, like entirely different muscle shape. And so we know I'm not gonna look like the same. So it's very, um, yeah, like, don't compare yourself to others. But basically, you do all the work or like, look for people who have looked very similar to you. Like, I'm like, okay, he's the same height. It's the same ratio of legs and upper body, you know, like his leg length is the same. Right. And, you know, and then you'll be like, oh, okay. So I think we have a very similar body type. Um, like he also has good shoulders and me too. And, you know, so, so, and then maybe it's a little bit more relatable and, but, uh, but I would be very careful with that because it's just in the end unattainable, even mm -hmm. though, it, yeah. So one of the pillars, foundational pillars that you mentioned is diet. So speaking of diet, yeah. could you please walk me through your daily routine? Like from the uh, moment you wake up to the moment you go to sleep, what, what, what your di diet look like? Yes. Um, so basically I focus on, on high protein, and, but also make everything fresh. So basically as I get, get up, I have a, I have a coffee, of course. Then, um, so I have usually have four poached eggs, half an avo on toast, on two pieces of, of organic toast. And uh, I, I eat a lot, like I work out a lot, so I'm not yeah. really young, so I'm also eating a lot. So, but, but technically, you know what I say clients and it's like, oh, I'll just leave one, you know, just have one toast instead of two. And you already save like 300 carbs. And 
you know, so if you don't want to have like a 900 calorie breakfast, but so I don't really count calories anymore, but it's just because I counted calories in the past and I usually always eat the same things. So you'll get really good at roughly estimating things. Um, yeah, so I have like four poached eggs on, on, on smashed avo with some goat cheese on top, some spinach around, a um, little bit of butter on the bread, not much. Um, so that's my breakfast. Then usually I have, uh, you know, take my creatine. Then um, while I'm, you know, work through my day, I train usually around 11 or 12 p.m., um, 11 a.m. or 12 p.m. and around lunchtime. Um, so then usually I end up, because I was getting very tired after lunch and very useless, so I usually drag it out. And if I have that day, if I have time to come home, then I just cook at like 2 or 2.30 p.m., usually having beef that I just cut small, quickly do another pan. So I, I'm very, I eat fresh and healthy, and it's delicious, I think, because the ingredients are very fresh in Australia, yeah. but it's not complex, and it doesn't take me much time. So right, the breakfast took me like 15 minutes, um, then lunch takes me like 20 minutes, you know, quickly boil some rice, um, some broccoli, and, um, and I'm just putting it all together, some onions. So very, I never like looked in a cookbook, but so I'm very just like have different ingredients. Um, yeah, and so like lots of vegetables, my 80 grams of rice or 100 grams of rice, so usually I don't finish the rice actually, having then, you know, a good portion of meat. Um, that's my lunch. And then usually I eat, not every night, but then often I ended up eating oats for dinner just because I'm like, oh, I can't be bothered to cook again. And then it's like, I don't want to like cook you know, like a big, like fish and this. And so it, it always varies a little bit, but so I need, so I tried to cut out carbs at some point, you know, and I was like very lacked in energy and I was got so hungry. And then I started eating sweets, so, you know, because like yeah. I'm so out of balance. And then, so I'm like, no, like if you have some carbs and you move enough, like it's not, that's actually helpful. So that brings me to the point where it's like, I sort of, just figured out along the way which diet works for me. And it greatly, like I was not able to cook at all when I was young. You know, my cooking in uni was horrible. But um, since I'm like living on my own here in Australia and cook a lot more, I sort of thought a little bit more like what are little things I can add to my diet that make it more delicious. Um, and actually like, you know, having some smoked salmon or some goat cheese on top on your, on smashed up or something like that's yummy. Like that's good. But it's, it it's is. all healthy and it has a lot of protein, but also has some carbs. So don't think you can't be healthy. That's I say sometimes to people like, well, you can be healthy overweight too, right? Like you can be unhealthy overweight, but you can also be healthy overweight. I didn't just eat too much. You eat very good food, but it's just too much. And you'll still eat at, at um, body fat. Um, but uh, what was my point? Um, yeah, I think, oh, so different diets work for different people. So you need to figure out, you know, what works for your best through trial and error. Um, there's not one superior diet and people have results with basically all the different approaches. You're on a keto, you're vegan. I had like one guy in Hamburg, he just started, he was a little bit vegetarian and then, you know, signed up to the app and my meals are designed by a dietitian. So he chose the vegetarian option and he just, you know, he kept working out and just ate, ate as a vegetarian and he dropped, you know, the weight just dropped off him and he like lost 10 kilograms from, I think, 95 to 84 or so, or 83 in the end. And he looks, you know, he looks amazing now. And he's like ripped and, 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 you know, got good, but also got good muscles. Um, and, um, and this just worked for him. It doesn't mean it's going to work for you, right? So, so you just you need to, to find out, the trial and error, body, like right? what works best for you. Yeah, but you always want to have, you know, high protein. Like we don't need carbs technically, they're fuel, right? So, so we want to have like some healthy protein sources. I love, I obviously ate a lot of eggs. Um, and, uh, and then like has healthy vegetable sources, have a few nuts here and there, right? Like incorporate that, have some salmon, so you get an omega-3. Um, yeah, so like that's what you're focused on, regardless what diet approach you sort of choose. How many calories do you eat a day? 
today well i mean my days just started that's I no no <laughs> not, not, not today i mean on a daily basis on average versus the how many how much calories you're burning uh, that's actually hard to so because i don't track it very often um i'd usually say between 2000 600 and 3200 or so so it depends on the day like usually i notice when i'm hungry and go to bed you know i didn't eat enough or or i'm like oh cool i'm getting a little bit leaner yeah. maybe right because like it's uh, it's 9 30 p.m and i'm laying in bed and then i'm like oh i actually could eat again so obviously you you, you, know, you shouldn't eat that late and right but uh so what i'm burning Honestly, I also have at the moment a lot of days where I work so much for uni and do admin work in social media. I'm just sitting. So I get my workout in and I run for 20 minutes and I work out. But technically, like I'm sitting maybe six, seven hours a day, wow. right? So it's like you basically don't burn anything. Yeah. Um, so I was, so that that's also another thing for people um, to realize is like if you sit that much, like if you go for a 40 minute run, you're going from minus to neutral. So you're just at neutral. Yeah. So you like, yes, you worked out, but you actually haven't really worked out because you moved so little, you just, you know, did your run or, or your 40 minute workout, you're back at neutral. And now you actually should do another thing on top. So to have like a positive balance. Yeah. Um, so if you're so sedentary, um, yeah, so, so basically that's why I'm usually then quiet, you know, at 2,400, 2,800. So no, don't so eat that It's so, much it's so interesting that you are not counting so because so many people who are in fitness and especially the one who wants to lose weight, they are always counting every day how much they consume and how much they burn. Yeah, and I, I usually tell it to my clients. I'm like, okay, you don't need to count every day. You can if you want to. Some of them are very motivated and it works for them. For others, like I have yeah. a client in, in Zurich and he always counts like every day. And I'm like, whoa, like this is very disciplined. I'm actually too lazy to do that. And then some clients, they're like, oh, you know, it takes too much time. Like it actually puts mental pressure on me. And I'm like, all right, we, you know, we just count for two days. And that's attainable. So you can just keep your diet in check. So, you know, if you count on Monday and Tuesday, you know exactly like, oh, the, 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 the exactly these calories. And then on Wednesday, Thursday, I eat similar. And I'll be fine. Um, I find if if I would if I were cooking different meals, like you know, very or new meals, like every day, then I should count. But because I usually eat the same things and cook myself, and I don't eat out much, that's why I don't really have to count because you know it's gonna be the same anyway. Right. right usually. Right. Um, yeah, I think that's why. And, and then just like always cut the carbs a little bit, you know, and focus on high protein, like you're going to be fine. And I guess maybe down the track when I get older and hopefully not move less. But I noticed it like when I was in, I had an office job in the end in the military and I was just like literally just sitting, still getting a little bit of workout, but I started not having breakfast and just having a little protein shake, you know, and then having some oats for lunch and then I ate the dinner. And that was enough. Like, yeah. and I was like, this sucks. Like, you know, I can barely eat anything because I'm just sitting all day. <laughs> um, yeah. So I think calorie counting can definitely be helpful. It can be empowering because you avoid all the mistakes, right? You have a salad and you put one little spoon of olive oil in it and not three because that just adds three, 400 calorie or whatever, right? It's like, yeah. oh, that's stupid. So it's like all those little things where like, Oh, okay, like I have a hundred gram of salmon, not 300, because that's then, you know, like six, 700 calories. Like that's insane. Or, or you just went on a treadmill for half an hour and you burned maybe 400 calories. And then you look at the piece of chocolate and you're like, really? That has like 400 calories? Like, oh, no, I'm not going to eat that. That was literally what I just burned on a treadmill. So, you know, it can be really empowering, but also it shouldn't become like an addiction, right? So Manuel, I have one last question to you. We love asking this question 
every guest because it really shows the real person. So the question is, who has been the strongest or most inspiring person in your life and what lessons have you learned from them? That's, that's a very good question. I never been asked that before. Um, there wasn't one person, I think, but there were always people on the way who, you know, when you go through life's phases and you have, I don't know, I feel like I always went through certain transformation and they're just like chapters, such certain chapters. And I had then like this person at that time had a really big impact, but it was like when I was growing up, it was, you know, like a, a certain person, his love for fishing and for nature and for also hard work. Right, so it was inspiring for me, and um, and then I met met a friend Jan Baran, and he was like very calm, but also super intelligent. He remembered all. He had a high tenure job that he did remotely because of COVID, but then he remembered everyone's names from every coffee shop, and he started making friends with all of them. And I'm like, how do you do that? You live here in Baran for half a year. You know everyone's name. You actually do little things for them. So they really like you, like their face lights up when they see you while you're managing like over a thousand people remotely, you know, and I'm like, so, so I find it's always like very, um, yeah, like different people um, along, along the way. Um, but, and also like, yeah, and then like another person being very successful financially and career wise, but then never interrupting people. You know, and I'm like, oh, we always think we're so smart and we just cut people off because I think what I have to say is more important. And that those highly successful, intelligent people who do not, you know, they do not interrupt other people, even obviously they know it better or they know a lot more. So, you know, it's like all of these little things I find that I always observed and that always sort of made a lasting impression. And I'm like, oh, I want to be like, be like this person. I, yeah. I, I love this answer because throughout the lives, as you said, depending on your um, stages of life, you have different you different mentors and teachers. And this question we should ask ourselves yeah. times to times, you know, like every five years or 10 years, I mean, whatever is uh, situation is to really see in hindsight who has been the person who inspired you. So you can be, you know, an inspiration for somebody else. Yeah. Because we just live our lives, as you said before, we are busy doing this and that and not really stop. Our mind is not stopping. I mean, I'm not calling everybody to stop their mind because when you stop your mind, you're going to be dead. <laughs> but just sit, relax, meditate and, you know, and uh, try to analyze your life. So, yeah. Manuel, thank you so much for joining for joining us today Thank and you. speaking. It was a fantastic conversation we had from your beginnings yeah, in the it. mountain infantry to specialize study in sports science and now as an accomplished fitness coach. Uh, everybody make sure to check uh, Manuel's website at manuxtrain.com. His holistic and yeah. sustainable strategies remind us that fitness is not about quick fixes, but a lifelong journey of patience, consistency, and smart choices. Once again, thank you, Manuel, for sharing your incredible insights and experiences with us. You've given our listeners much to think about. And uh, it's your turn, as you said. Uh, it's your turn. What step will you take down towards your fitness goals? Remember, transformation is a process and every step counts. Thanks so much for joining. Thanks, Dave, for having me.